Hey guys, Bar from TST Industries here. In this video, we're gonna show you the installation of the TST Industries Gen 2 flasher relay on a Honda CBR500R. This will also fit your CBR500F. All right, so this is a plug and play unit. We are currently the only company supplying plug and play units for this particular bike. It is an adjustable unit. If you don't like your flash rate, you can get inside and adjust the flash rate to your liking. It is uh, shipped to you pre-configured to 85 cycles per minute, which is the OEM rate. You can see the OEM rate right there. Typically, if you go with LED signals on a bike or an integrated taillight, your flash rate will go up radically and you see the fast flash rate here. We've rigged this bike to have no signal on the rear. This is the same symptom that you'll see whenever you go to LED flush mounts or LED integrated taillight, you will see this and uh, this little unit that plugs directly into your harness without any sort of conversion or modification necessary, it will restore your flash rate to what you see on the left side here. We need to get under the tank in this bike, so we will need to remove a couple of the panels and also remove the fasteners from the tank. Other than that, this installation is really simple. Follow along, let's get started. All right, to begin the process, we will start by removing the seats. This particular bike is outfitted with a Corbin aftermarket seat. So these fasteners may be slightly different than OEM fasteners. I am using a five millimeter Allen to remove this. It's likely a similar size to your OEM seat retaining bolts. Once those two come out back here, this just slides out and we can put that to the side. Next, we will need to remove this panel and that is done using a five millimeter Allen to remove this screw here. We also have a push pin that is located directly under this corner here in this panel. To release it, we will press in the center and pull that whole push pin out of there. So it's one of these guys. I just reset it to this position so it's ready to be reinserted in there. Now there are a bunch of friction fasteners behind here that hold this guy on and also a tab on this portion here. So I'll flex it away and that releases this tab and now I could just release all of these friction fasteners from their grommets and this panel just comes off. I'm going to repeat this procedure on the other side of the bike. All right, so now we can put this panel to the side and proceed to the removal of the last two fasteners that we will need to remove. One is right here and there's another one on the opposite side of the bike in the same location. Both of these are five millimeter Allen. Now we'll be able to unhook the Velcro from behind this area on the two sides. And at this point, we'll be able to remove the tank by removing the eight millimeter screws up front and a 10 millimeter nut and a screw from the back. And this will back up a little bit and allow us the access that we need to get to the compartment where the relay will be found. So I'm using an eight millimeter socket here. I'm gonna crack these loose and then by hand, this is just a little bit faster, allows me to work more efficiently. And I'm gonna extract these screws. Switch over to a 10 millimeter socket. And the back of the tank has one single 
bolt going through it with a 10 millimeter nut on one of the sides. And that comes off and unlocks the bolt. seems to be completely free once you take the nut off of it. So I'm just turning it and pushing it from one side. That makes it a little bit easier. All right, since this one bolt going through the rear of the tank is giving me a little bit of a problem, I'm gonna push it from the side that doesn't have the head on it with this Allen key and turn it with my ratchet here on this side and that will enable me to get it out. All right, once this comes out, the tank is free. Now we'll be able to pick it up and move it back making sure that we clear all the fairings and not scratch them up. And before we do that, I wanna mention one thing. You have your battery back here. Um, on this particular bike, there are some auxiliary devices plugged into the battery. I'm not going to trust that the positive terminal is insulated enough so that when I pull the tank back, I may touch it and, and create a short and that's just not good at all. So I'm gonna use a towel, put the towel down and that will insulate my connectors, my battery connectors from the tank or anything else. I may place down and we'll be good to go. Now, once you get to about this amount of distance, you'll notice some uh, resistance to pulling it back and that's because there is a hose right here it's an aerator hose you need to slip the clamp off of it and slip the hose off that will need to be replaced on the way back in once the tank is back this far and hanging like this we have enough access to proceed with the rest of the insulation this is the hose and this is the clamp I was talking about the clamp Pretty easy to push by hand and just slip it off down the hose by about an inch and then you pull it off this fitting that enables you to pull the tank back. Once we are done with this relay installation we will go in the reverse order of disassembly and this hose and clamp will have to fit on the fitting before the tank goes back. So let's now identify the relay. Our OEM relay on this bike is this little black gray box right here that is mounted via a rubber keeper here. Let me just pull it out just like that. And down on the bottom, you'll see a rubber boot that can be slipped off the plug. And that exposes this plug. And as you can see on one of the thinner sides, there is a button type feature you can press that will release the plug from the relay. I will grab this rubber keeper off of the relay, put the relay to the side and grab the TST Industries relay. As you can see the plug will just simply fit over the OEM harness plug, snap right in. The boot can be placed over that. We'll grab the rubber keeper that we scavenged from the OEM relay and slip it onto our enclosure. And that can go back in place. You'll have to feed the boot and the plug down through a little hole in this tray. And then our new relay just fit right onto the tab that the OEM relay sat on and this will complete a really nice professional looking installation. I'll grab the key real quick 
and test the system out. Make sure we have proper flash rate. And it's looking right. These relays come pre-configured to 85 cycles per minute. If you don't like that, if you want to fine tune your flash rate, then you could pull this back out and take a tiny flathead screwdriver and pry off this red cap out of the gray enclosure. And you'll be able to take this circuit board out, put the components, I don't need to hold for now, off to the side. Okay, as you can see, this blue part here, it's a potentiometer. This governs the speed at which this thing blinks. So if you wanna plug this back in, the side that says plus goes into the white wire and negative goes into the black wire. And when you turn the potentiometer one way, it'll slow down the flash rate by a pretty drastic amount and go all the way to the other side. And now you have crazy hyper flash, you have a rave going on on your bike. So at this point you will figure out what flash rate you like, what works for you. And right about there is how I like it. One thing I want to know is that you shouldn't leave this dangling anywhere with the bike powered up. Lots of contacts that can ground out and blow up one of these components and then your relay is worthless. So before you let it go, power down the bike. And at this point we could take the circuit board out, fit it back into the enclosure. On the enclosure you have one side that's got a channel in it and one that doesn't. So the circuit board obviously goes into that channel fits in, you bottom it out, and then you grab the red cap. You'll see that really there's only one way that you could press this in. Press it in until it snaps, and then you plug it back in, and you are pretty much good to reinstall everything. One point I want to make here is that our relay will enable you to have signals on and your hazards on whether the bike is on or off. So keep that in mind and don't forget to reset your lights before you walk away from your bike after you've parked it because otherwise you'll have them blinking for a long time and you may discharge your battery. So at this point, I'm just gonna perform the steps of disassembly in the reverse order. So I can close this bike back up and we could be ready to go. All right, so first things first, I will need to advance this tank forward, making sure that I'm clearing the panels and get my hose and clamp back on. There's really no good way to show you guys this in the video, so I'm just gonna rest in the comfort that I've done enough explaining for it and you guys will understand what I'm doing. This is a little bit cumbersome. So now I got the hose on and the clamp is advanced. I'm good to insert all these tabs of the tank under the fairings and get the tank back in position. On the front, this just rests over threaded bosses in the back. You have to get the holes in the tank mount aligned with the hole on the rubber isolated mount and then get this bolt back through there. Once you have it aligned, you can tap it in.
and now I'm gonna reinstall the 10 millimeter nut that came off this location. Both sides of this bolted connection is a 10 millimeter. All right, that is done. Switch back over to an eight millimeter. get these fasteners threaded in. Now we will need to align these fairings with the bosses here. And then once this is aligned, we can press down here. There is a Velcro that snaps together. Do the same thing on both sides. Get these Allen fasteners back in. And past this point, the remaining steps are very, very simple. They are just the reverse of how I disassembled the bike. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the commentary and just perform the steps in front of the camera. And I think that will be sufficient for you guys. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, just like that, the installation is complete. I am going to test the system one more time, make sure everything's working properly. And it looks like it is. As you guys can see, this is vastly made easier by the plug and play setup that we provide you with our parts. Uh, I hope you consider checking out these parts on our website, hit subscribe, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please place them below in the comment feed. We do monitor our channel and respond to those comments as soon as we see them. And uh, that's pretty much it. See you guys next time.